Glory. Glory. Woohoo. Well, she has a point there. Wars and battles. Wars and battles. Everyone say wars and battles. Wars. Remember, we were born in a war. Amen? We didn't know it. <laughs> Just because we didn't see the physical things manifesting. And we didn't understand the spiritual things manifesting. We've heard a while about wars, we've heard about people dying and so forth, but we did not understand, unless you've ever been in the military and seen the destruction and the things that happen, um, it's hard to understand that and comprehend what really goes on. But in a war, there is no, there's no compassion. Wars are fought to destroy. There are wars of defense and there's wars in attack. But in wars, there's battles. So there's many battles. Wars are long term. Again, we've been in a war since the beginning of time almost. There's been a war going on. And Revelation 12, verse 7, let's go there, remind us of this war. Wars and battles. Revelation 12, verse 7. It says, and war broke out in heaven. In other words, long time. So when war breaks out, it means it's going to be a long process. Again, in the war, there are battles. And war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought. But they did not prevail, nor was there a place found for them in heaven any longer. In God's presence. So the great dragon was cast out, the serpent of old called the devil, and Satan, who deceives the whole world, was cast out to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Verse 10. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ has come. Hallelujah. For the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives to death. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. But woe without eternity to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea, for the devil has come down to you having great wrath, because he knows it is a short time. Now when the dragon saw that he had been cast to the earth, he persecuted the woman who gave birth to the child, male child. So we need, there's two things here that's called Israel, amen, and the body of Christ. But the woman was given two wings of a great eagle. And I believe these two wings are Moses and Elijah. that she might fly into the wilderness to her place where, there is, where she is nourished for time and times and half time from the presence of the serpent. This is three and a half years. I believe this is the rapture. So this is where the body of Christ will be rescued from the war. So the serpent spewed water out of his mouth like a flood after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away by the flood. But the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened its mouth and swallowed up the flood, which the dragon had spewed out of his mouth. And the dragon was enraged with the woman. And he went to make war with the rest of her offspring, who keep the commandments of God. These would be most likely the Jews. And have the testimony of Jesus Christ, because after the rapture, believe me, many of them are going to have a testimony of Jesus Christ. 
Everybody understand that? So we see here that war is a long-term fight with many battles. War against the Christians right now is tremendous. It's still going on, and this is what it says. There's Semitism, anti-Semitism. There are people who love Christians and those who hate Christians. Right now, the battle is against Christ and anything associated with Christ. So that's why we have anti-Christ. Amen. Again, the rapture will be the release from war, but it will, the war will continue with daily battles on the earth against spiritual forces of influence especially in our government and education, the music, medical, political, and all the other things that go on, currency, religion, and all kinds of things that will be left behind. That is major influences. It's still happening right now. In Isaiah 14, it talks about Lucifer in verse 12. Isaiah 14, verse 12. Who is considered also the serpent, the dragon, and so forth. Isaiah verse 14, uh, 14, verse 12. Was everybody there? It kind of explains why God removed him from his throne room. It says, how you have fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. How you are cut down to the ground, you who weaken the nations. For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation on the farther sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds, and I will be like the most high God. I would say this break, arrogant and prideful. And the Lord's response is, you are going to hell, homie. Yet you shall be brought down to hell, to the lowest depths of the pit. And those who see you will gaze at you and consider you, saying, is this the moron who made the earth tremble? Who shook kingdoms and made the world as a wilderness? who use political parties, governments, education, the website, the internet, music industry, Hollywood, and shook the kingdoms. This man made the earth tremble. Verse 17, who made the world as a wilderness and destroyed its cities, who did not open the house of his prisoners. All the kings of the nations, all of them sleep in glory, everyone in his own house, but you are cast out of your grave like an abominable branch, like a garment of those who are slain, thrust through with the sword, who go down to the, who go down to the stones of the pit, like a corpse trotted underfoot. You will not be joined with them in burial because you have destroyed your land and slain your people. The road of evildoers shall never be named. Prepare slaughter for his what? His children, his offspring seed of the serpent because of the iniquity of their fathers Nephilims lest they rise up and possess the land and fill the face of the world with cities like Nimrod did I believe there's a divine intervention because this was getting ready to happen again this was their plan this was the plan of Lucifer he had all of his servants placed in position. Governments, our ex-president, servant of Satan. Democratic Party, servant of Satan. The min, uh, many of the medias, CNN and all these other ones are all servants of Satan. The devil had this all planned and all of his people in position. They never expected Trump to win. They thought crooked Hillary had it all. And she thought she had it all. See, she thought she bought her way through. And all the morons that were servants in the FBI and so forth, and they thought they had it. Oh, they thought this plan was phenomenal. They thought they were going to destroy 
Christ. See, their battle was against Christ. See, they reject, even in their gatherings, they reject God. They boo when God's mentioned in their meetings, the, the Democratic National Party. When, they're, when God is mentioned in their meetings, he's booed. People have no idea what is going on. It's incredible. It was escalating. But God, through his grace and mercy and divine intervention, through the prayers of the saints, he said, I'm not going to let this happen. I will not allow the world to be ruled, even though he, Satan is the ruler. Amen? But he was going to allow his people to be destroyed over all of this because it's not time. It is time for rescue. It's time for revival. It's time for a new season, a fresh anointing. Amen. We are here right now because of things that are awakening. The body of Christ will be needed as things are going to be exposed. People will not know where to go. They'll be running and calling for help. What just happened? I don't know if you saw today or not, but I'm telling you, I, I, I was watching the news. And they were talking so much about UFOs. They have them on video. Military pilots, commercial pilots, private pilots, corporate pilots, they're all recording all of this stuff about UFOs. They got all of these UFOs on film. All these crafts. Believe me, when you and I are gone, they're going to proclaim that you and I were taken by aliens. They're going to conjure up something because they're always trying to conjure up something to counteract anything that God is trying to do. Everything Trump tries to do, they try to counteract it. They, they what they call false flags, they, they have disasters to distract In other countries right now, this is phenomenal. In other countries right now, they are crying USA. They are chanting USA in Paris, Iran, all other countries all over the world. They're, they are chanting USA. Because of what God is doing in this country is infiltrating the world and setting people free. People are now, these governments are now being dethroned. Satan's servants are being removed all over the world. Many are being arrested for child molestations and smuggling and all the other stuff. In Ephesians 6, this same war that started in the beginning is still continuing. Oh, happy days. Wars and battles. Ephesians chapter 6, in verse 10, we know this. Finally, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. That means the anointing. Be strong in the anointing. Be strong in the anointing. Everyone say, be strong in the anointing. Be strong in the anointing. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles or the trickery of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this age, and against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. That means battle. And having done all, to stand. Again, these are spiritual battles multi in, with a multidimensional war. Somebody got it. We are having spiritual battles in a multidimensional war. 
physical and spiritual. There are those who are partakers and there are those who are forsakers. You're either going to be a partaker of this war and become a part in the battle or become a casualty. There are winners and there are losers. Forsakers become losers. Partakers become winners. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, You know, God said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because they don't know how to battle. They don't know how to battle. They don't know what, how to attack. They don't know, they don't even know. Some people don't even know what a demon is. Even though they should because they probably carry a bunch. But 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 1. Let's speak it. You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace, which is in the plan, right? I want you to understand not only is grace associated with God's plan, but it's a plan of attack too. Be strong in the plan of attack. Why? Because you're to be strong in the anointing. If you're strong in the anointing, you are an attacker. And the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. You therefore must what? Endure. Hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life. And he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. And also, if anyone competes in athletics, he's not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. The hard-working farmer must be first to partake of the crops. Consider what I say, and, and may the Lord give you what? Understanding in all things. You and I are enlisted by Christ, <laughs> born into this battle, <laughs> but we're enlisted by Christ for him. To battle for him in the war of eternal life against eternal death. It says that the Lord gives us understanding of dimensional realms and wars and battles and strategies, especially influences, and he gives us understanding of weapons. This understanding doesn't come through education. It comes by revelation. I'm going to say it again. This understanding does not come by education. It comes by revelation. The Lord gives us understanding of dimensional realms, wars, battles, strategies, and the influence and weapons to be able to utilize. And it doesn't come by education. It comes by what? Revelation. Revelation. In 2 Corinthians 3. Wars and battles. There is a dimensional war, but then we also have a personal war. <laughs> We have personal battles, don't we? Everybody's in a battle of some sort. But it's because we live in a war. So if you're in a place where there's war, you're going to have a battle. You must be careful you don't step on any mines. Amen? You must be careful what you associate with because there's a lot of false individuals. You've got to be careful what you hear, what you see, what you believe. And you must be careful what you speak. Because they're listening. 2 Corinthians 3, verse 12. Let's speak it. Therefore, since we have such hope, we use great boldness of speech. Unlike Moses, who put a veil over his face so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at what was passing away. But their minds were blinded. For until this day, 
The same veil remains unlifted in the reading of the Old Testament because the veil is taken away where? In Christ. Now grab hold of this. Where the veil is, there's no understanding. Does everybody get this? Where the veil is, there is no understanding. So the enemy's always trying to put the veil back on, isn't he? Why? Because then we lose understanding. We lose perspective. We lose perception. We lose discernment. We begin to drift again. And back into darkness. So only in Christ Jesus is the veil, the blindness, the hardness of the heart removed. So there's no other religion, no other organization, no other false deity, no other doctrine that can remove the veil so that people can have understanding. That's why they will never understand you. Does everybody get this? Only in Christ. Now, that's phenomenal, isn't it? Remember, Jesus said to them, look, it's been allowed for you to know the mysteries of the kingdom. He told his disciples in that. Mysteries, things that are hidden, unknown, unseen. So it says here, hallelujah, nevertheless, when one turns to the Lord, the veil is what? Taken away. Now, the Lord is the Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. But we all with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. Again, understanding starts when the scales and the veils are removed. The Lord is the spirit of the Father, carrier of the anointing. Again, it's the presence, power, and truth of God Almighty. All in the Holy Spirit. Only the spirit of the anointing can remove blindness, hardness, and deception with a new birth in the present time. In 2 Chronicles chapter 20. Second Chronicles chapter 20. Oh, happy days. Wars and battles. In verse 1, 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 1. Is everybody there? And it happened after this that, the, read it with me, the people of Moab with the people of Ammon and others with them besides the Ammonites came to battle against Jehoshaphat. Then some came and told Jehoshaphat, saying, A great multitude is coming against you from beyond the sea, from Syria, and there are Hazanah Tamar, which is in Gidi, and Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord. He did what? He feared, but he set himself to seek the Lord. And he proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. So Judah gathered together to ask help from the Lord, and from the, all the cities of Judah they came to seek the Lord. Then Jehoshaphat stood in the assembly of Judah in Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court. And he said, O Lord God of our fathers, are you not God in heaven? And do you not rule over all the kingdoms of the nations? And in your hand is there not power and might so that no one is able to withstand you? Are you not our God who drove out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel and gave it to the descendants of Abraham, your friend forever? And they dwell in it and have built you a sanctuary in it for your name, saying, if disaster comes upon us, sword, judgment, pestilence, or famine, we will stand before this temple and in your presence, for your name is in this temple, and cry out to you in our affliction, and you will hear and save. So he was speaking everything that had been written. And now here... 
are the people of Ammon, Moab, Mount Sira, whom you would not let Israel invade when they came out of the land of Egypt, but they turned from them and did not destroy them. Here they are rewarding us by coming to throw us out of your possession, which you have given to us to inherit. Hmm. Was he say, O oh God, will you not judge them? For we have no power against this great multitude that is coming against us, nor do we have know what to do, but our eyes are upon you. Anybody ever been in that circumstance? Hallelujah. Now all Judah, with their little ones, their wives, and their children, stood before the Lord. And then the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jehazel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the the son of Jezel, the, the son of Manathiah, uh, a Levite, the sons of Ashpha, in the midst of the assembly. And he said, listen, all of you of Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem, and you King Jehoshaphat, thus says the Lord to you, do not be afraid nor dismayed, because this great multitude for the battle is not yours but God's. Again, the anointing came on an individual to speak. So the anointing was speaking through this individual. Tomorrow go out against them. They will surely come up by the ascent of Ziz, and you will find them at the end of the brook, therefore, before the wilderness of Jerol. You will not need to fight in this battle. In this what? Battle. Position yourselves, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord who is with you. Position yourselves, spiritually positioned. O Judah and Jerusalem, and do not fear or be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord is with you. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground, and all Judah and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem bowed before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. Then the Levites and the children of the Koranites and all the other children of the Koranites stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with voices loud and high. Loud and high. So they rose early in the morning and went out into the wilderness of Tekoa. And so as they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear, O Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem, believe in the Lord your God, and you will be established. Believe in his prophets, and you shall what? Prosper. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed those who should sing to the Lord and who should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army and were saying, praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever. I love that they went out before the army. Put, they put God before the sword. Amen. Now when they began to sing and praise the Lord, uh, the Lord did what? Set ambushes against the people of Ammon, Moab, Mount Sirah, who had come against Judah, and they were defeated. I want you to know right now that worship has never been no greater than it is now. Amen. There is more worship going through the world than ever before. And God is setting ambushes up. Amen. The music industry and uh, uh, the Christian music industry is exploding. People are plugging themselves into music all the time in praise and worship because they know the anointing is in God's presence through praise and worship. And it's causing a lot of ambushes in the enemy's camp. Hmm. Verse 23, For the people of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Sira to utterly kill and destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Sira, they helped to destroy one another. I talk about confusion in the enemy's camp. So when Judah came to a place overlooking the wilderness, they looked toward the multitude, and there were their dead bodies fallen on the earth. No one had escaped. When Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away their spoil, they found among them an abundance of valuables on the dead bodies and precious jewels, which they stripped off for themselves, more than they could carry away, and they were there three days gathering the spoil because there was so much. Now again, the king of Judah was Jehoshaphat. The battle against Satan's offsprings were all of these tribes. There were servants of false deities, gods and goddesses, and Baal, Baphomet, and so forth, and of the harlot. But, uh, because of God's intervention, which we are seeing right now, that's why so much praise is going up, 
much of the enemy is being ambushed. So I want you to understand something, that these things are manifesting right now. We are in this battle. But the end result is prosperity. Its purpose of prosperity is to assist those that are will be in need. It's not to build our own mansions and so forth. It's to expand the kingdom of God. Amen? In Revelation 17, you and I are seeing this happen right now. There will be a shift in prosperity that will blow many people's minds. Revelation 17, in verse 1, it says, And one of the seven angels who had seven bowls came and talked with me, saying to me, Come, I will show you the judgment of the great harlot who sits on many waters, with whom the kings of the earth committed fornication. Is that happening now? Yes. And the inhabitants of the earth were made drunk with wine of their fornication. Look at all the lust that's brought through the website and everything else. Internet. Advertisements. Everything is associated with lust. With whom the kings of the earth committed fornication and the inhabitants of the earth were made drunk with the wine of her fornication. Man, I just saw on, I think it was on uh, a newspaper or something? They had some strange dude in a bus. I don't know if it was a guy or a girl. I don't know. But it's amazing. Welcome to Sodom and Gomorrah in New York City, you know. Everything's turned around. I mean, every place that's run by an offspring of Satan, which is a Democrat, there's nothing but drugs, needles, pornography, perversion, Cities are turning. They're disgusting. Places that were beautiful are now no longer beautiful because they don't care. Remember, they're out to dismantle and destroy everything. Verse 3. So he carried me away in the spirit in the, into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast which was full of the names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns, and a woman arrayed in purple and scarlet, and adorned with gold and precious stones and pearls, having, her hand, having in her hand a golden cup full of abominations and the filthiness of her fornication. And on her forehead a name was written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots, and the abominations of the earth. So we got to understand something, that this spirit, this organization, mysteries, Babylon is the organization, amen, is the kingdom, it's Satan's kingdom. It's also associated with Nimrod, Tower of Babel. He was a Nephilim also. And so in this, because they have their own gods and goddesses and false deities and so forth, and they actually believe that they are gods. But these spirits are invading, and people are inviting them, opening themselves up to them. And they are taking in and possessing, being possessed by these spirits and acting out whatever these spirits are coordinating to do. And they're actually causing these individuals to draw more demons out that were in captivity. It says here, I saw the woman, verse 6, Drunk with the blood of the saints. With the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I marveled with great amazement. Wow. The angel said to me, why do you marvel? I will tell you the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carries her, which has the seven heads and the ten horns. And I'm not going to get into all of that. The mystery means something hidden, unseen kingdom. Babylon, amen, the Tower of Babel, Nimrod was a, was a king. And where there's a king, there's a what? Queen. Hmm? Somebody got it? There's a king and a queen. 
at the time we see that the spirits right now that are involved in it says Ahab and Jezebel. And we're seeing this in our government. We're seeing this all over. We're seeing people being taken in and possessed by Ahab and Jezebel and being used by Satan's kingdom. I'm telling you that God, the only way, every time God, now behind these spirits, we know that it's, it's, they serve Baal. They're servants of Baal. And, and so in this, God always had to anoint prophets, which he actually used for judgment. God has to anoint individuals to battle these spirits because these spirits cannot be defeated without the anointing. That's what we're seeing right now. And maintaining the anointing is essential. In 1 Kings chapter 18, One of the prophets was Elijah, in verse 25. It says, now Elijah said to the prophets of Baal, choose one bull for yourselves and prepare it first, for you are many, and call on the name of your God, but put no fire under the sacrifice. So they took the bull which was given to them, and they prepared it and called on the name of Baal from morning eve. Even, even till noon, saying, O Baal, hear us. But there was no voice, no one answered. Then they leaped about the altar which they had made. And so it was at noon that Elijah mocked them and said, Cry aloud, for he is a God. Either he is meditate, maybe he's meditating or he's busy or he's on a journey or perhaps he's sleeping. He must be awakened. So they cried aloud and cut themselves. Anybody know about cutters? People who cut themselves are actually sacrificing themselves. They're offering their blood. Every drop of blood they do is offered to Baal. And it opens every time they do it, they invite another demon in their bodies. So they cried out aloud and cut themselves as their custom with knives and lances until the blood gushed out of them. And when midday was past, they prophesied until the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice, but there was no voice, no one answered, and no one paid attention. Then Elijah said to all the people, come near to me. So all the people came near to him, and he prepared the altar of the Lord that was broken down, and Elijah took 12 stones according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, whom the word of the Lord had come saying, Israel shall be your name. Then with the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord, and he made a trench around the altar large enough to hold two sheaves of seed. And he put the wood in order, cut the bulls in pieces and laid it on the wood, and said, fill four water pots with water and pour it on the burnt sacrifice and on the wood. Then he said, do it a second time, and they did it a second time. And he said, do it a third time, and they did it a third time. So the water ran all around the altar, and he, and he also filled the trench with water. And, he came, and it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that Elijah, the prophet, came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known this day that you are God in Israel, and I am your servant and that I have done all these things at your word. Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that this people may know that you are the Lord God and that you have turned their hearts back to you. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice, the wood, the stones, and the dust, and licked up the water that it was in the drench. Now when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces, and they said, Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. And Elijah said to him, seize the prophets of Baal. Do not let one of them escape. So they seized them, and Elijah brought them down to the brook of Kindron and executed them all. There was 450 of them. A God, God used his anointed, his presence, power, and truth to combat these evil powers of multidimensional spirits.
as he will do again today in continuing. In Kings in 19, in, the, in verse 1, just go to the next chapter. It says that Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done also, and how he had executed all the prophets with the sword. And Jezebel sent a messenger, messenger to Elijah, saying, So let the gods do to me, and more also, if I do not make your life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. And when he saw that, he arose and ran for his life. It's pretty amazing, huh? Beersheba, which belongs to Judah, and left his servant there. <laughs> he booked. I mean, the guy just got done slaying 450 prophets. I'm telling you, when the anointing lives, you must hold on. So we don't want the anointing to lift. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> In verse 11, the Lord God said, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and the great and strong wind tore into the mountains, and the brook and the rocks and the pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And, and afterwards, the wind on the earth, and the earth quaked, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a small, still voice. So it was when Elijah heard that, he, was wrapped, he wrapped his face in his mantle, went out and stood in the entrance of the cave, and suddenly a voice came to him and said, what are you doing here, Elijah? <laughs> what the? And he said, I have been very zealous for the Lord God of hosts because of the children of Israel who have forsaken your covenant, torn down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they seek to take my life. And, of course, the Lord said to him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when you arrive, anoint Hazel, king over Syria. Also you shall anoint Jehu, the son of Nisha, as king over Israel. And Elijah, the son of Japheth, of Abba Mahalah, you shall anoint as prophet in your place. Now I want you to know that Jehu was the son of Jehoshaphat. Does everybody understand that? Jehu was the son of Jehoshaphat. Same thing. So he's going to fight the same battle. Amen? In verse, um, and, and he said, uh, and it shall be that whoever escapes the sword of Hazel, he, uh, Jehu will kill, and whoever escapes the sword of Jehu, Elisha will kill. Yet I have reserved 7,000 in Israel, all whose knees have not bowed to Baal in every mouth that has not kissed him. Man, that, to me just, I'm, I hate, that reminds me of like the Pope, you know? How many people have bowed their knees to him and kissed him? Talk about Baal. You know, they also wear the same logo stuff as Baal worship, Catholicism. That fish hat, it's the same thing as Baal. See, people, went, they're just they destroyed because they don't know what the heck's going on. They think visiting the Pope and bowing before him and kissing his hand is something special. Yet they're bowing to a demon. Oh, happy days. Is everybody okay? Praise God. So in this, we see that there was an anointing passed down. Amen? 2 Kings 9. Is everybody all right? Wars and battles. Okay, how do you get the anointing? Get in God's presence. How do you get in God's presence? Praise and worship. Now, can you get in God's presence if you have sin? No, so you must repent. The blood always goes before the spirit. Amen. Second Kings, verse nine, or Second uh, Kings nine, verse one. Let's speak it together. And Elijah the prophet called one of the sons of the prophets and said to him, "Get yourself ready. Take this flask of oil, and in your hand go to Ramoth Gilead." 
Now when you arrive at that place, look there for Jehu, the son of Jehoshaphat, the son of Nishmach, and go in and make him rise up from among his associates and take him into the inner room. Then take a flask of oil and pour it on his head and say, Thus says the Lord, I have anointed you king over Israel. Then open the door and flee and do not delay. I want you to understand something very powerful. In a very similar circumstance, this happened to Donald Trump. Does everybody understand this? Verse 4. So the young man, the servant of the prophet, went to Ramah Gilead, and when he arrived there, there were captains of the army sitting, and he said, I have a message for you, Commander Jehu said, for which one of us? And he said, for you, Commander. And he arose and went into the house, and he poured the oil on his head and said to him, Thus says the Lord God of Israel, I have anointed you king over the people of the Lord over Israel, and you shall strike down the house of Ahab, your master, that I may avenge the blood of my servants, the prophets, and the blood of the servants of the Lord at the hand of Jezebel. So Trump's battles against Ahab and Jezebel as ours is. For the whole house of Ahab shall perish, and I will cut off from among from Ahab all the males in Israel, both bound and free. And I will make the house of Ahab like a house of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, like the house of Basha, the son of Anahish. The dogs shall eat Jezebel on the plot of the ground of Jezreel, and there shall be none to bury her. And he opened the door, and he took off. Now this was proclaimed over him. Amen? Go to verse 30. Now when Jehu had come to Jez Jezreel, Jezebel heard of it, and she put paint on her eyes and adorned herself and looked through a window. Then as Jehu entered at the gate, she said, Is it peace, Zamari, murder of your master? Why? Because he killed who? Ahab. And he looked up at the window and said, Who is on my side? Who? So two or three eunuchs looked out at him. And he said, Throw her down. So they threw her down. And some of her blood spattered on the wall and on the horses, and he trampled her underfoot. And when he had gone in, he ate and drank, and he said, Go now, see the, this accursed woman, and bury her, for she is a king's daughter. So they went to go bury her, but they found no more of her than the skull and the feet and the palms of her hands. Therefore they came back and told him, and he said, This is the word of the Lord which he spoke by his servant Elijah the Tishbite, saying, On the plot of ground of Jerel, dogs shall eat the flesh of Jezebel, and the corpse of Jezebel shall be as a refuge on the surface of the field in the plot of Jezreel, so that they shall not say, Here lies Jezebel. Again, this battle is going on right now, and that's why God has placed Trump into office. Is everybody okay? Wars and battle continue to this day. Second Peter 2. So do we need to be anointed? Do we need to be filled? Do we need to be ready? You got to understand also, when you know these things, the enemy comes against you because he doesn't want you to spread the truth. 2 Peter 2. Oh, happy days. 2 Peter 2 and verse 1. Is everybody okay? Let's speak it. But there were also false prophets among the people, even as there will be false teachers among you who will secretly bring in destructive heresies, even denying the Lord who bought them and bring on themselves swift destru destruction. 
Many will follow their destructive ways because of whom the way of the truth will be blasphemed. By covetousness they will exploit you with deceptive words. For a long time their judgment has not been idle, and their destruction does not slumber. For if God did not spare the angels who sinned but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved for judgment and did not spare the ancient world but saved Noah, one of eight people, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood on the world on the ungodly and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them to destruction, making them an example of those who would afterward live ungodly and delivered righteous Lot, who was oppressed by the filthy conduct of the wicked. For the righteous man dwelling among them tormented his righteous soul from day to day by seeing and hearing their lawless deeds. Then the Lord knows how to deliver the godly out of temptations and reserve the unjust under punishment for the day of judgment. And especially those who walk according to the flesh in the lust of the uncleanness and despise authority. They are presumptuous, self-willed. They are not afraid to speak evil dignitaries. Whereas angels who are greater in power and might do not bring a reviling accusation against them before the Lord because they don't need to. God knows. Somebody get it. Listen, the word tells us that you and I are the ones to bring execution. We're the ones that execute judgment now. Somebody get it. We are the body of Christ. We are the executors of judgment directed by the Spirit of God. So you can call fire down on anything. I call it every day. I'm out to destroy everything. I don't care what it is. I want it destroyed so Christ can be glorified. Amen? Anything that's anti-Christ, I want destroyed. Everything that's, every person that's associated with anything that's anti-Christ, I want destroyed around them so that they are left with nothing. So their only way out is Jesus Christ. Amen? And that's how you and I need to see things. We want to destroy everything. We've come, God has raised me and you up to execute judgment. Psalm 149. That's where we are. That's what the word says. I'm not going there right now. Oh, happy days. We're going to go to ja uh, Romans 11 and close here. Roman. Romans 11. Verse 1, I say then, has God cast away his people? Certainly not. For I also am an Israelite, the seed of Abraham, the tribe of Benjamin. Of the tribe of Benjamin, God has not cast away his people whom he foreknew. Or do you not know what the scripture says of Elijah and how he pleads with God against Israel, saying, Lord, they have killed your prophets and torn down your altars, and I alone am left. And they seek my life. But what does the divine response say to him? I have reserved for myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to Baal. How many of y'all know that you are reserved for God? Even so then at this present time. At this what? Present time. As a remnant according to the election of grace, God's plan. We are the remnant left. And if by grace, then it is no longer of works, otherwise grace is no longer grace. But if it is of works, it is no longer grace, otherwise work is no longer work. What then? Israel has not obtained what it seeks, but the elect have obtained it, and the rest were blinded. Just as it is written, God has given them a spirit of stupor, eyes that should not see and ears that they should not hear to this very day. And David says, let their table become a snare and a trap, stumbling block, a recompense to them. And let their eyes be hardened so that they do not see and bow down their backs always. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? Certainly not. But through their fall, to provoke them to jealousy, salvation has come to the Gentiles. Now, if their fall 
is riches for the world and their failure riches for the Gentiles, how much more their fullness. For I speak to you Gentiles, inasmuch as I am an apostle to the Gentiles, I magnify my ministry. If by any means I may provoke to, je to jealousy those who are my flesh <laughs> and save them and, and, and save some of them. And if their being cast away is the reconciling of the world, what will their acceptance be? Life from the dead. For it is the first fruit is holy, the lump is also holy. And if the root is holy, so are also the branches. And if some of the branches were broken off, and you being a wild olive tree were grafted in among them, and with them become a partaker of the root and fatness of the olive tree. The olive tree is representation of the anointing. Do not boast against the branches, but if you do boast, remember that you do support the root, but the root supports you. The root does what? Supports you. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We ask you to keep us continually fed from your throne room, filled with your spirit, anointed for battle, and aware of war so that we may have eyes to see things all the way through, ears to hear, and a heart to follow as you continue to call us and direct us. I pray blessing over each and every one and reality of who we are in you, in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Praise God.